I'm joined down by senior writer at the National Review, Noah Rothman. Good morning, Noah. You didn't have to put on a tie for me. I assume you've got a hit later. Uh, let's begin open-ended question. What did you think of last night's Brett Bear interview with Kamala Harris? Well, I, first of all, it was the interview equivalent of shock and awe. It was just surgical strike on policy uh, deficiency after policy deficiency. And Kamala Harris just does not have satisfying answers for any of the questions that were asked. She, her answers have not evolved over the course of this campaign on her policy evolutions from this radical progressive persona she struck in 2019 to this born again moderate she wants to be, what she knew and when about Joe Biden's infirmities. Uh, she's the same person that she's been since those those uh, policy positions were announced in the rote press release uh, where she described them in the first place. And her the very outset of the interview was extremely unsatisfying because she does, does that whole I'm speaking gambit. And that only works if you're actually saying something. She was not saying anything. Mm. She was filibustering her way through a very unsatisfying an answer in, in the pursuit, aimless pursuit, of some sort of thought worthy of expression. So, and it was bad and a failure for those purposes, because we heard Brian Fallon say in a statement after this interview that the objective of this interview was to reach independents and Haley Republicans. And she gave them nothing. She gave them absolutely nothing to hang their hats on to allay their fears that she's a radical progressive in the guise of a moderate the, who would be a proper steward of their interests. That said, while I think it was a failure, I don't think it was an abject disaster because the performance of it was a very different Kamala Harris. It was the kind of Kamala Harris we saw in the debate stage, which is this prosecutorial, sort of aggressive, get your backup kind of type. And she did even turn the tables on Fox News, I think actually rather adroitly, when she called them out for not playing the clip of Donald Trump actually saying the remarks about using the military domestically, and rather talking about him talking about those remarks. And that activates the partisans in her audience who are Fox haters. So if her, her objective here, and this is a base election, the margins really matter. So if the objective was mitigated a little bit by the fact that she probably activated some of her partisans, I don't think it was an abject catastrophe, a career ending interview. It was a failure on its own terms, but I don't think it was the catastrophic disaster some of her critics are painting it as. Okay, we disagree. And we disagree because I've done between 30 or 40,000 interviews and the ones which I've gotten angry at maybe five times, always because people don't answer questions that are posed or filibuster. And I believe the audience shares that general reaction that they are very smart and they know a filibuster when they hear it and they know a refusal to answer. Let me play for you, I think, the, the moment that really lost her votes last night. And you've written, and Selena Zita just quoted the same aphorism, politics is a game of addition, not subtraction. Here is the key question, in my view, cut number 10 frankly exhausted of Brett. More than 70% of people tell the country is on the wrong track. They say the country is on the wrong track. If it's on the wrong track, that track follows three and a half years of you being vice president and President Biden being president. That is what they're saying, 79% of them. Why are they saying that? If you're turning the page, you've been in office for three and a half years. And Donald Trump has been running for office. But you've been the person <laughs> holding on, the office, come on. Madam you Vice President. You and I both know what I'm talking about. You and I both know what I'm talking about. I actually about. don't. What are you talking about? Uh, what I'm talking about is that over the last decade, but people you're the have become. Of power. But listen, over the last decade, it is clear to me, and certainly the Republicans who are on stage with me. All right, Noah, what do you think of that answer? It was a bad answer. She doesn't. The goal of the adversarial interview is to answer the question you want to answer, not the question you were asked. That's politics 101. But the thing about that is you have to establish a, a transition to the answer you yes. have to give. And she never did. Yes. That. She never transitioned. Okay, let's, pre let's pretend you're Kamala Harris. How would you have answered Brett Baer? 79% of the country think we're headed in the wrong direction. Well, I, that is the, the premise that she was going for, which is Donald Trump has been the dominant force in our politics for a decade, is the right answer from her perspective. But the transition would have to be a smoother one 
like the the coarseness of our politics you were you and i both know that the coarseness of our politics has gotten so much worse over the last decade it wasn't like this when we were coming up right and from there you transition to well but it's because the the politics that we that we've become accustomed to have been adulterated have been corrupted by this all-consuming influence and that's where you want to go but she doesn't get there she says you know what i'm trying to say right no, <laughs> I'm not going to yeah. help you out. I'm not going to hold your hand and guide you to the right answer. That's not my job. My job is to elicit answers from you, not to help you answer them. Uh, and and he say, interrupted her when she wouldn't when she wouldn't answer. And I believe he did a fine job uh, in terms of giving her a chance and at bat, but refusing. Did you hear him after the interview explain the tricks that Team Harris played? Um, what with the uh, the waving her off the schedule? scheduling conflict yeah the, 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 conflict. that they shorted the time she showed up late and then they were four people yelling at him to rap it's very rude not to show up on time it's very rude i think she would have been better served by a leisurely hour and a half what do you think <laughs> yeah, i don't think she would have been better served by an hour and a half no i think she she managed to pull off what she could possibly pull off if she was there for a 90 minute, you know, of extemporaneous discussion about a broad range of policy issues. I don't think it would have been a better interview for her. Probably would have been worse. The interviews are not good for her. This was one of her better interviews because it was adversarial. The soft focus, friendly interviews, the giggly town halls, they're bad for her. They create bad moments for her that haunt her. They played one last night from The View. That clip is not going away. I don't think there's a similar 10 to 20 second disastrous clip with the possible exception of her saying that you have to take responsibility for your own administration. That's gonna be turned back on her, but it will be it'll be taken out of context and there will be people who will defend it in that sense. But the fact that it was an adversarial interview was good for her. That is a good format for her, better than her other formats for sure, possibly a low bar, but nevertheless. And I, I can't if imagine- she's not rushing out to get another one, Good God, no. she was thinking about Joe Rogan. She's not going to do that. Seriously? Noah, my proposition is this. I, either her staff is terrible or she's a bad candidate or both. Which is it? But it could be both. But if I had to lean on one over the other, I would say she's a bad candidate. And this is not something that we didn't know previously. This was universally accepted conventional wisdom that she is a maladroit performer on the campaign trail and always has been and doesn't do her homework. This is the sort of thing we all have. We have a paper trail documenting the degree to which she does not do the reading. She does not read her briefing books. And then she gets really mad at her staff when she's unprepared and looks unprepared in these moments. We have reams of reports on this behavior before she was the nominee, at which point motivated reasoning descended on the Democratic Party. And she simply had to be a good political talent. She's not. She never has been. The best, the best actor in the world can't make a bad script good. And this is the problem. So we're facing la last two questions, Clarence. Noah. Uh, new Fox News poll this morning, first one of its kind. Uh, Donald Trump is up two nationally. Uh, what does that tell you? And what is your advice to Team Harris? Honest, sincere advice on how to close the last 20 days. Yeah, so that's a it, if you go into that poll, it's a it's a weird poll. I find polls very difficult to parse these days because we're trying to tease out the smallest possible movement among tiny sets of demographics that could be influenced by sampling error or uh, methodology. It's a, we we could just be parsing evidence that is just leading us down inaccurate paths of analysis. Um, but that being said, the momentum seems to be behind Donald Trump. At this point in the campaign, at the perfect point in the campaign for the Trump, for the Trump people, um, I don't, I don't know how Harris breaks through this news cycle. This is one of those events that attempts to do it, and it might, it might have legs. And the fact that she subjected herself to a, a difficult interview is a generous dispensation to voters. We deserve to see this from both candidates, and Kamala Harris will get some credit from both her opponents and her supporters for just going to the lion's den. Um, and I would I would hope to see Donald Trump submit himself to a similarly uh, aggressive adversary. Did you watch the Univision town hall last very, night? No, I didn't have the opportunity have to you, do so. It was very, very aggressive, and he did very, very well. Uh, I have played well, good. This parts is, of this it This is the today. bare minimum urge, that voters but, should expect. Yeah, and, and he's willing to do it. I mean, if there's any podcast left in America that he hasn't done, has he done the uh, report, the editors yet, Noah? 
<laughs> he's not done the editors. But I don't. I don't know yeah, if I, I would put. I, I don't um, know, you that... know the uh, the very culture, the very low cultural uh, products that he's doing to try to reach out to young men. I don't know if I would put that on the same places I would 60 Minutes, frankly. I think we, I personally would get more information from that interview than I get from uh, Barstool. I wouldn't go near CBS in a million years. They're broken. But Noah Rothman, thank you as always, Noah C. Rothman. You listen to him on the Editor's Podcast. You occasionally hear him guest host over at the Commentary Podcast, and he writes every day at NASRU.com. Thank you, Noah. Noah C. Rothman on X. I'll be right back.